people, Killer Keller here. This is Arts Arcade Piccadilly for the Street Culture Podcast for Television. Um, today we are talking to one hell of an individual that scoured the surface of street culture into the wider world of commerciality. Harvard lecturer, Geneva ambassador for arts, number one beatboxer uh, globally, uh, inspiring generations, uh, and yes, he is a lecturer in his own right. Reaps One is in the building for a conversation. Reaps One inside the house, how are you? Always a pleasure, sir. Hey, not bad, huh? I mean, we've been at this for, jeez, I mean, we're talking about 15, 16 years. Yeah. These hard conversations, well, easy hard conversations. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's always, um, even from just the beginning days, mm. uh, Interesting to talk to you. You've always got a different perspective on mm. on most things, um, and it's yeah, it's nice to be able to explore and just see what's out there. Because uh, it kind of frustrates me when people maybe think inside too much of a box. Mm. And you're not one of those people. No, mm. no. It's 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 actually really <clears throat> um, pleasurable to see your journey as a uh, beatbox artist slash creative artist in in all the all the sense. Um, kind of walks a kind of parallel line of my understanding and how I kind of came up through different fa- different paths and different moments in my career and it's it's incredibly it's incredibly relatable mm. you know um watching from afar which is always a good thing yeah i mean it's it's interesting cuz um i think when it comes like style in any space whether it's yeah graph beatbox fine art mm. movement like they, there's a there's a kind of set of rules that applies across the board, and in every kind of culture subculture, you see the people that are maybe following what's established, but then then those outliers that either come first mm-hmm. or are always um, finding diff- different ways. And uh, early early days, we have spoken about this before, but I think you were always. Um, just every single sound you made, but also the way that you were part of culture and the way that you were performing and the different spaces that you were going in. Um, it was just like all originality. And that's a hard thing to mm. define. Mm. Um, but in in those cultures, you, you have the people that are enjoying being inspired, but then there's those kind of strange ones mm. that for some reason they can't uh, copy. And yeah. they're, they're, it comes from somewhere else, which yeah. is um, something to... Kind of explore. There's lots of uh, instances like that across the uh, tapestry of music. You know, there's only one. Well, there's only one Keith Richards. There's only one um, uh, Keith Flint. There's only one Slash. There's only one. These people are few and far between. These iconic, dare I say, iconic, um, but in reference, they're people that. Uh, uh, irreplicable, mm. aren't they? Um, and uh, people model their actions, even if it's not the same genre that they're in, they model their actions to their heroes, the people like that. Who are yours? So you um, and... Uh, I mean, it depends in, in what space as well, because, like, I um, I have, like, many, many idols. It's, like, something mm. that I say a lot. Um I think like having a constellation of greatness. Mm. So like people that you, when your heart really resonates with something, it's so important that you kind of lock into that. Um, because uh, I think if you if you find one thing that you want to copy or you're really inspired by, then you're copying. But mm. if you have five things and you yeah. copy them all at the same time, <laughs> then you end up in an, in an original space. Yeah, I love that. But I am um, like directors like Chris Cunningham, Ooh. producers like Aphex Twin, um designers like Rick Owens. Mm. Um back in the day with like Beatbox, it was like you and Faithless Effects. Mm. These were two people that I had felt it kind of came from I do this kind of face intentionally, but it came from somewhere mm. like uh that I thought was authentic. Mm. For some reason, um producers like Marla, um producers like mm. Venetian Snares, like just each one for some reason. I would, and there's a, there's a, there's more, but they're people that I just felt like what they were doing was coming from something like intense. Like mm. there's a reason why mm. they're doing this. They're like either pushing for something much bigger 
or they have a lot of pain mm. or there's 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 a coping that comes from the art and that's a that's a different world yeah. to doing things because you enjoy it I'm not saying it's better or worse yeah 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 there's no like elitism here <clears throat> but for some reason maybe it was only in my own mind and to this day i still like see things and it or someone speaking and i'll get that like there's like a feeling of engagement and that's like my definition of greatness so it's those people that i i'm still a student to wow yeah. that feeling of greatness to find that a little bit more yeah i mean greatness is one of my favorite like topics because mm. we kind of are losing uh, we're getting right into this, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, but Off we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so great, yeah. greatness is a really interesting one because I think in, like, today, which is amazing in many ways, everything is very accessible. Mm. And, like, every skill, every idea is, like, on the end of a device. So there's an argument which is there's a there's an equal and opposite kind of happening, which is masterpieces the concept of masterpieces like superstars and mm. greatness mm. it's much more abstract these days yeah it's like yeah yeah you don't you don't you know actually <laughs> well i tell you jimmy yeah uh, but so 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 all i mean by that is your like say in the room right now was the the greatest of all time in something it would be yeah. way harder for that person today yeah. to permeate and be celebrated for that because they'd be looking at his numbers thinking well how is he popular how is he not popular if he's that you know well skill is not uh it's not everything mm. these like i think ability and talent competency was like the main factors of mm. what brought people to the top and if you were persistent and you kept going then you would get through uh, obviously luck is always like a factor um but if you had the skills and you got to the right gate mm. you uh, you could get through that and it gets harder and harder where now elements like social media mm. algorithms mm. um there's a lot more uh that is kind of diluting for better or for worse the the process of talent so so for me greatness is um it's the ability to authentically express something with like world-class competency mm -hmm. and when i say competency it's like the ability to know your craft and you know why you're doing it and then this is uh this is a little more like bizarre but i also the stuff that i see is great is when i feel like someone is doing those two things authenticity uh and competency but they're also expressing their shadow like they're they're bringing out something that is really um, intensely, viscerally them. Maybe something even like unconscious, but it's being channeled through what they're doing. Um, Talk to me about the shadow. What, what, explain that uh, theory. Yeah. So, so Carl, <laughs> um, just just for the people listening, um, like there's a, a psychotherapist, psychologist called Carl Jung, right? And Carl Jung believes in the the archetypes, right? So collective unconscious. And what that is, is um, he actually went into a lot of mental institutes um, and he interviewed uh, thousands of, of mentally ill patients. And he asked them about their dreams, about their hallucinations. And what he found is there were characters that kept coming up again and again across all the stories. So right. you have the magician, the wizard, the hero, and then there's the shadow. And what those represent are called like archetypes. They're things that are in us that mm. help us tell stories and things people can sometimes, he argued that people would unconsciously slip into these roles as, as people, right? Like your Sasha Fierce kind of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So what he argues is the shadow is an archetype that is in everyone. And what it is, is it's your, um, it's basically like your most intense, pure, unconscious self which can sometimes be something very dark it can be something very light but it's this like energy that sits beneath a lot of your choices and um this isn't exactly my thinking but something called shadow work is <clears throat> it's basically meditating on your capacity for evil and that sounds kind of weird right it sounds no, like very dark sense. but he argued that you can only ever be a good person if you know your your capacity for bad and this this argument of um, someone that's smiling all the time and it can't help but be very nice and they're mm. always very positive, they don't have negative in their vocabulary. So mm. he, he would argue that, well, if you can't be negative 
are you ever actually positive? Like, do you actually have any control? Like, yeah, yeah, because there's no me to de there's determine There's no choice. Yeah. It's like someone that's always complimenting you, Killer Kelly, 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 you're amazing. You're mm -hmm. so great. And then you come to me for like a real opinion about something yeah. and you're oh, like, I've made this track. Harry, can you give me your opinion? And like, oh, it's great. It's like, you always say that. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah, but yeah. if I can give this other expression, uh, his argument that this was like the whole. So to go back to this greatness thing, it's really, really hard as an artist to tap into that mm. in a way that is beautiful and powerful and it actually like sort of like manifests. And that that's what I see as greatness. And it's interesting, like anyone out there that likes dark music, mm -hmm. sort of heavy, dark music, doesn't mean you're a bad person, right? Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're evil, but you're drawn to it. Yeah. That's your shadow. Really? That's your shadow pulling you towards this other side of yourself where um, art is one of the only things... That can draw you into that space. It can draw you in and it can... Art is one of the only things that can draw you in and turn an internal negative into an expressive positive. So when you hear a sad song or a film yeah. about dark, difficult situations or deep... Dark, I love my hard techno. I love yeah. dark music. I wouldn't say that I'm a dark person, but I love my music hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's uh, an expression of an other half of me that's inside meeting itself through art, which wow. is a positive. But if you if you explore those things through like actions or you avoid them, there's an argument that people bubble up or they become stressed or even aggressive. So when we talk about art as an expression, mm. you're getting out this like this part of you that's locked in a cage. It's away, and if you express that as art, you're more whole. And I, I love that idea. Yeah. And and people that tend to do that, they can be more calm, they can be more sort of measured, more confident, because they know what they're capable of, or they yeah. know what these other things that are in them. And people that don't do that exploration, this is only an argument, they are always looking for something. They're always there's always something yearning or some kind of um mm. uh it could be a relationship, it could be a person. So so to integrate your shadow is to become more yourself. And you. the argument again is you make better choices in your life because yeah. you haven't got this like empty thing. And for some people, I think that instead of it, um, uh, people do their shadow work through making art. Mm. They get that hard, that darkness out. They, they, they make a song that is hard. They choose a subject matter that is difficult. Um, what about and, from a, a visible, like, like visual arts? Or even going to the gym? There are other ways of ex, 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 stoops, expelling there. Yeah, expelling expelling. That. Well, this uh, the argument is you don't need to get rid of it. It's a part of you, but you want to meet it. You want yeah. you want to meet yeah. it, and, and and through through mm. the art you can you can meet your shadow. Um, uh, but it's um, it's it's an intense process. Again, I don't own mm. any of those ideas, but Carl Jung is really really interesting. But I, your, the question was about greatness for me and. I just uh, like Chris Cunningham. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. your guy though. You've worked with him. No, I have never met Chris Cunningham. Haven't you? No, no, I've never met Chris Cunningham. I mean, you've met a lot of people though. I've met. A I mean, you're here at box least tickers. One. Yeah, yeah, at least one I've met uh, yeah. in the world. But no, Chris Cunningham. He did all of the kind of creative direction for Aphex Twin. Gotcha. Um, his stuff is so intense and dark, but he was picked up by like the filmmaking advertising commercial worlds he did a lot of pieces for bjork yeah so that's that's all that's a perfect example is when people just don't hold back mm -hmm. they literally just release their light and their dark in their art apex twins another one he doesn't make any sense no because his stuff is confusing yeah it can be non-aesthetic it can be complex it's it follows no rules but he's an icon yeah like the and but yeah. he's an icon because of his authenticity and his just he doesn't give a he so, yeah. does. and it's, and it's amazing when someone <clears throat> can not give a and st still is so powerful and successful mm. like that's greatness to me yeah like, that's what i'm so inspired by so what about kanye west then by that example well kanye west is uh as a rapper is seen as as, as greatness as a a level of his creative direction but his like his authenticity and his expression is divided. Well, not divided the world. Most people, have, <laughs> including me, heavily disagree with a lot of things that he's saying, and it depends what kind of lens you put it on. But like Kanye is, uh, he's arguably. Um, I want to say this in in a in a compassionate way, but we we could say that maybe there are there are certain 
mental traits that he's expressing, which is, mm. let's say, not him, mm. but if I was to look at it in another person, there is uh, there are elements of um, psychosis and things that you can uh, associate with uh, delusion, but that is also coming, you could say, comes from the shadow. Mm. It comes from the same place, but that's why it's hard to channel it. And like, and he's an example of he's just this unrelenting force. But like, um, like the you can move into hate. Like hate isn't mm. art. Like people can argue for that, but moving into hate is is a is a different thing to it, trying to express your authentic soul. Yeah. in a way that is like abstract or just for in the pursuit of healing, not in the pursuit of hate. Oh yeah. Like, and I think uh, again. Let's put Kanye to the side. But if someone was to be pursuing hate through their messaging, it's a very different world. And um, this is why uh, authenticity is hard and why truth is difficult mm. because it can um, it can literally affect the entire world. Yeah. If you speak your truth, if you do it really well, you look at figures in the world today, one of the big draws is, oh, he's so authentic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's so himself. Yeah. But that can be like uh, good salesman. misused. Very yeah. good salesman. Um, so I'm really interested in all these subjects, like beyond the art, it's like human beings, like greatness in psychology, greatness in just, uh, just people being people and mixing that all together. Like I've met dogs that have greatness. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some yeah, dogs yeah. have greatness, like the way that they are so themselves and the charisma and the way that they just, everyone that meets that being is like given like energy. So I'm not, I'm not like, um, I'm not gatekeeping this. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. that this is some elite thing. I think everyone has the potential, but I like uh, to to think about that subject a lot. Well, your your uh, career path, I mean, starting at its root with beatboxing and leading to these kind of conversations now, I feel like it's all one and the same because the way that you have been able to adapt beatboxing to not just creatively, but, you know, the human spirit, um, the nuances of of people mm. and how critical even the way people speak tonally on a day-to-day -day level can mm. determine their whole outcome of their life. Now that's something that you and me have talked about a bunch of times and if you're if you're taking reference from a beatboxer that's mm. the kind of conversations we should be having. Like how do you better your life just on a normal vocabulary uh you know tonal kind of way mm -hmm. to help help you get by a little bit better i mean you've you've always been about the deeper dive into these this this sort of world mm. i mean and as a disclaimer like it's it doesn't always have to be complex and deep like i personally like love going into the into the depths of it but but what you're speaking about there with voice is actually very simple like people when it comes to movement right mm. if you're a breaker or a contemporary dancer you stretch mm. simple um, and why do you stretch? It's because your body needs it, right? But I argue that the, and people forget that the, the voice is a limb. The voice is a part mm. of the body. Uh, how often does anyone stretch their voice? This, this thing, enough. this thing that affects everything, yeah. your relationship, your sense of self, yeah. you just do it. And that's the beauty of it. Like everyone is designed to be a master of their own voice. Like the conversation we're having now is more complex than the Miles Daly's Davy solo. Like mm -hmm. that's just something to like acknowledge. Wow. But um, but the, the, the thing that's really important is people are avoidant of their own voice. So if you meet it, it's, an, it's a bit like staring in the mirror. So mm. it's an interesting exercise. Like looking at yourself in the mirror is awkward. It's yeah. Strange, shouldn't, shouldn't be, it's you. Why is that all? Try doing 500 podcasts, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him up. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah. seismic, you know, development of, uh, of yourself over that period of time. I mean, totally. Another it's feeling. like, I think anyone can feel like a bit uh, challenged by like seeing yeah, themselves. Yeah, all the time. But meeting your own voice, understanding your own voice, it has like huge, huge benefits. And if you never stretch it, like if you never shout or even scream in your life, there's a lot to argue that you're missing out on... Um, you're missing out on a certain way of being. And people get by without stretching their bodies, right? Mm. But if you do, um, there's a lot of evidence that it's, it's, it's good pretty, for you. pretty all right for you, right? Yeah. And uh, stretching your voice is, is a really important part of, of the whole circuit, I argue. It uh, opens opportunities in the wider world. Mm. Um, authoritative figures. I mean, you get those guys that talk like that, all right? Uh, that immediately pigeonholes them. In a certain time and era, it puts them in a 
more uh, guttural place. Uh, not that I'm judging, but you get I'm coming from. That just for those that are watching and not quite getting where we're coming from. But then there could be somebody that looks like this, and they're so cute and quaint. And you can't pair those two people in the same world. Mm. So much like they do and they don't. Not in your mindset. Not yeah. in a human mindset. Like the thing, obviously, profiling, it's not to say one is better than the other. No, no, no. But there's this whole world of a voice that people don't think about. But again, just to keep it really simple, it's like, you should scream, man. You should shout. You mm. should open up. Like, what? There, there's a really interesting idea that if someone, if, if, if someone in a room here, like right now, and you can't get them to shout, like they literally, oh, no, no, I can't. Oh, like, that's a block. Mm. You're scared of something. Mm. Like, what are you scared of? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, no one's gonna hurt you. No. But there, there's like a, a, a trauma there, and the voice holds a lot to do with your um, sense of self and your the, the things that have happened to you in your life yeah. are all stored here. So if you if if you're talking very quiet and your body language is like this, like that's a representation of your um, of your experience. So if you can break through the voice, if you mm. can change the habit in your voice, it's really interesting how it can just. It, like in the same way, if you stretch, it can open up your, the tension goes. Mm. If you can scream and shout and laugh really loud, like you open up a part of yourself mm. that people can forget. And as time goes on, people choose a range and they always talk in this mm. area. And, oh yeah, and um, the argument is is that you always think like that. Like there, there's, you, you've cho you've chosen a frequency. The voice chooses like what what yeah. the mind thinks. So I, I find it really interesting. Just whenever I'm around people, or like when I lecture, um, you get people to scream, and it's always interesting who can't do it, like uh, and the reasons they say they can't, and what happens when they do. Like it's um, I sound like a sort of a, a cult leader here, but like mm -hmm. there's um, a really interesting. It's happened a couple of times now where you very safely encourage someone to do it and they get really emotional. Mm. In the same way, I don't know if, if you've gone to like for a massage or if people do yoga, sometimes people unlock a, a tension that's been oh, there a yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get emotional. Like or it's or like going a on a roller coaster. Mm. Um, you know, they scream really loud. In, you know, and they're, they're going through these emotions that they actually can't control. Mm. You know, they can't hold control themselves. That's, a, that's another thing, isn't we'll let it? let go of control. That's, that's what it's all about. It's like we have so much like control. We control everything these mm. days. Everyone's so scared of like making a social media post that's wrong, like mm. right, releasing the wrong song, doing the wrong painting, like choosing the wrong like country to go to for holiday. Um, it's like we're 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 so obsessed with control that sometimes it's only small things within ourselves that can help us just like let go. Yeah, and that's been like a huge thing for me is to just like. Um, just trust more in the process. Mm. Like I used to be really transactional. I'll go to this country for this project. I'd stay the length of the thing. Wouldn't let any like mystery or mm. uh, not enough mystery into my life. And that's been over the last couple of years like that. Just letting there be negative spaces or try stuff that I would never ne like never even like have a go at before. Mm -hmm. um, just to like let in possibility. So if it's the voice, if it's movement, if it's a conversation with you, like... Mm. If it helps people let go, mm. like we have to just like like relax our jaws and our shoulders and just and if we do that in a creative way as well, mm. even like more amazing. Yeah. Um, so I so I love anything that can unlock that, and for me, I think it's like voice, and also like I mean, it might not come across for me now, but like I ca I came from the gutter, like I came from underclass family, mm -hmm. like both on benefits. My mum is is autistic and. I love her to bits. She's mm. amazing, but I call her little mouse. She's just this little, like, uh, beautiful little uh, energy. And my dad was really, really creative and a uh, uh, powerful mind, but he was much older. He wasn't very well. Mm. Um, so nothing in my life would have given me an opportunity, but it was my voice, mm. whether it was beatbox or how I talk or how I express my ideas. Like, it's, that is the single thing that has given me all the opportunities mm. today. And it was nothing to do with class, inheritance, opportunity. Nah. So that's what, like, when I say this stuff, it's not just coming from like, a, oh, like, this is an interesting thing people As talk a theorist, about. Did, 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 a theorist yeah. thing. It's like, no, I, I really think that these ideas are like a little bit mysterious and can also really help people. Mm. And um, I love super dark technical beatboxing and I love ideas that can help people. Mm. And like, 
I've sort of merged the two, and as an artist, I, I explore that, uh, and I'm in love with it. I'm going to do it till the day I die. Yeah, you do love it. Um, taking the the regular human voice and then uh, re repurposing it for athleticism. Um, I think there's only two realms that could actually provide that high challenge of of uh, tenaciousness, and that's you know comedians and beatboxers. Mm-hmm. Um, the delivery on both have to be super on point, mm. and you'll know about it mm. when they don't like it, um, or at least yeah, from a from a competitive standpoint of beatboxing. Um, it's not to everyone, is it? It's certainly not the uh, the easy route to go down. Um, it's it's very it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Like being so obsessed with voice is like objectively strange. Um, but like, I don't know. It's I've thought about like why like there's a certain uh, ca- the characters right that mm. really commit to it. <laughs> they all have a quality. I wish, even though like I think I'm like a little bit articulate to this day. I don't know how to like put my finger on that je ne sais quoi but there's a certain openness mm. and um curiosity right uh that drives everyone um but the thing that's like always like kind of pushed me which is a little this is a bit more of my artist ego kicking in now is um i was just i always wanted to i always felt even when i first started i'm like i might find something here that no one's done before mm-hmm i love that shit yeah yeah that and and it was that was kind of that simple um <laughs> Like there was just something about that idea. I was just like, like the world is so big, and mm-hmm. I was I was like pretty damn small. Like the world is so big. Um, I just think there's like there's a chance to find something new, and and I think maybe everyone has that a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's whether or not they're um, curious enough with the skills they've they've been issued with themselves, like to in you know from a very young age to have been curious about the human voice in the first place, to then mm. develop at least, you know, at least six, 7,000 hours before you jumped on stage and said to yourself, ah, oh, you know what, this has got some legs. But actually, the doors could be opened a little bit wider. Mm. There is a window of opportunity here. I um, remember seeing you perform for the first time. I, it etched in my head. It's just like, fuck me. That was a fucking Polaris missile going straight through the fucking venue. <laughs> it was it was huge mm. and it, and uh, a, totally off radar to I the need majority. To, I need that quote from mm-hmm. you. That's like uh, that's a really good one. <laughs> I'm gonna chase you for that. Um. <laughs> it's on here. You got it. Um, but uh, to had the foresight, um, and again, I think that's where the creative mind uh, it goes. We're, we're people dare to travel Mm. yeah i mean you had the foresight to do that yeah but it's it's strange like um because like things have changed a lot like i've i've moved not i've not left i have absolutely not left beatboxing behind it's still like right by my side but he's left beatboxing behind guys no (laughs) no no but i um i've expanded a lot but Mm. my the the back in the day like roots like it really just got me, it got me through everything man mm. like when i was on my i had my friends and stuff but like um it's it was really tough like where where i grew up and i yeah i through hard times i was able to always just go into my voice mm. and um like bef- before um uh, early dubstep it was like i said like idm and like harder jungle mm. and amens and and then the, the the dubstep movement came in like early like lofar and mala and the dnz yeah that's guys. right yeah yeah and um it was just Power all horse this, productions and things like that yeah, tectonic plates and yeah. like this it was this weird timing that i was exploring and i had this darkness in me i had this mm. anger like i was really really angry like as as a kid and um for for a few reasons and then all this dark music came into my life and i just so happened to be exploring this stuff in my voice and it just like <laughs> just like Locked. fused and that was always and still is like my uh things have gotten a bit more elegant because i'm i'm just uh, exploring uh but but that darkness is always there and that's always felt like home for mm. some reason and if i was producing um if i was doing anything else like it would be to uh now I th- now it's funny i hadn't actually thought about that is to express my shadow mm. like that getting that out for some reason it just took away the pain took away the anger mm. and the frustration 
when I was just doing this super hard, intense yeah. beat, but that I never thought I would ever do it in front of people. Um, and little by little, uh, like I remember the, 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 some of the first foreign beggar shows that I yeah. did. And I dropped, <laughs> That's right. yeah, I dropped uh, uh, my cover of like, um, where's my money? Yeah. Like TC. And the room just went off. It just like decimated. And I was like, oh, like this, this thing isn't just for me. Mm. Like this energy isn't just me self-indulging for some reason. There's something else happening. And, that energy like continued and that's when I talk to like newer artists whether it's beatbox or something else is like just just be careful not to like hide away parts of you too much like can I can I stick with just this subject the where's my money and the, the connectivity that when you did that when the drop came in and people knew exactly what that was it was you know the best described in my mind would be if a train went past with loads of graffiti, but then you saw Mickey Mouse character. Mm. It's like when you do a cover, mm. it's almost like opening opportunity, allowing people in. I think that's my biggest challenge with the beatbox scene now. It's become so um, in crowdy, introverted, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it just it loses its way somewhat. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How are we doing? Is it That's weird. Yeah, okay, okay. Just keep on re-upping re it. Yeah, because it's 4K, so we can zoom in as well. It's not, okay, it's yeah, not sure. A, I mean, I'm, I'm easy. All, not, all is not, we do that anyway. Um, um, so, yeah, so I feel like, I feel like perhaps it, it lacks a bit of uh, welcoming. Yeah, I mean, I, I always say that there isn't better and worse. Like, it's all very subject, subjective. Um, but it's funny because I'm on both sides of the coin because yeah. I, uh, I used to like the idea of remixing with my voice. Mm. I would take an idea and something because I was in much more like heavy club context, like whether it was like Rainbow Warehouse in, in Birmingham or Fabric here in London, um, like Boomtown or Glastonbury. I was always on the heavier stages mm. um, and, and I was doing like out an hour. So like... Uh, I don't know how you ever did that. I've got to say... To keep a crowd for a whole hour doing your own renditions, that's incredible. I mean, that, that's got to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. So, so that I've seen, um, I have seen, like, for example, Kenny Muhammad do like an hour and 30 minutes, except he's basically just doing drums the whole time. Yeah, man, like, doing his own songs as well. No, I, this, this is no joke. And it's, it's, um, it's sort of like, uh, it's a hard thing to just like describe, but like, I legitimately like played clubs alongside DJs for like sometimes over an hour. Um, and uh, I think to this day, like that's maybe one of my greatest achievements yes. in beatbox. It's I'm like so it's unheard of. Like it's, unheard it's of. completely like I was because I when I was doing that, I was just waiting for the others to kind of start doing that more, and and, and it's still like not so much a thing. Why is that still not? So, well, well, I, I don't I, I get think it. I know why is because I thought a lot about um, it. Wasn't just me. It was also like me and Lyndon, mm. Lyndon J, like thinking about producing uh, the sonic the sonic process. Mm. So. Um, the, the the my favorite set of all time uh was uh playing arcadia uh w with linden on the 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 giant spider yeah. at boomtown 10,000 people um but the whole time i cuz we were on top of the spider so we had Lin linden was there so uh, just to describe that process it's like it doesn't change the beatboxing it's just it's a great mix yeah, yeah, yeah. and we could automate a little bit so that when I do a big build up. It goes wide. Just creates the di it just moves the dynamic. The dynamic, like any track, less yeah. than any track. But the main thing <clears> is, this, it was my music, yeah. right? And this was the way to translate it. But um, I uh, we're up in these. Like, we're talking like a huge function one rig, like mm. circular, like. And when I go a second later, I hear. <laughs> so I had to close my eyes because no one can see me anyway. I closed my eyes and I did. I did an hour set like that right and the whole time i was like in this flow state i stopped a little bit a couple of times and i heard just enough noise to know that there's a reaction got to the end of the hour like everyone screaming and shouting and to this day Damn like literally son. six months ago i got stopped in the airport saying dude i saw you at arcadia most people didn't even know it was beatbox wow yeah because of the size of the rig like that's something a lot of beatboxers don't know is when you're on a massive sound system, it's a different beast. Yeah. If you've got good yeah. production and and a yeah. and a, a, a an amazing rig, 
you become this other animal. Yeah. And I and I touched on that a few times. And to have like five thousand people, ten thousand people dancing to just your voice, crazy. Um, and it's translating, and everyone's in, and there's that that moment, right? Uh, we're geeking out here. But yeah, yeah. Just like, Geek mode. Yeah. So love it. So th there's a difference, like. There's the showmanship of beatbox, the kind of amazing part where it's like, look at this, um, uh, look at this technique, or look at this cover, mm. look at this moment, right? And it's this intense virtuosic display of skill, which is amazing. But the thing that I got addicted to was this other mode where you come out, and at first everyone's like, oh wow, like is, is it him? Is it not him? Um, what, what what's it happening? My fans knowing what's going mm. on and saying it's his voice and all all that novelty stuff, mm. right? But then after ten minutes, people stop pointing and they start moving. And if you're keeping that consistency and you're the other thing is if you're not rushing, and you're not going off beat. Yeah, do, 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 do. And, and you're you're approaching it more like a progressive live electronic set where you're adding elements and you're yeah. taking stuff out and like hooks and things like that. What starts to happen is the um the kind of like immediate cheering all stops and everyone's dancing and you've wow. got them they're locked in yeah and that's then you've got to keep that so so that's the it was that mode that made me feel like i uh, was more with my like producer counterparts like people around me from the electronic world and which was always my focus like i i came into the beatbox scene as a producer with my voice more yeah, than yeah, yeah. i was a beatboxer i remember it dude i remember it yeah. but don't you feel like you wanted it i'd love to see that i'd love to see that yeah yeah well i'm um so i haven't done like a proper solo show since uh i did a i did a set in tokyo in 2019 Damn. and then um the pandemic kicked in yeah. and then uh, a lot of my life changed like we all know what happened yeah. over that period I started to grow some other things which which changed my life in a lot of ways and um i'm actually like uh exploring that option no, so we need it but my music like what the actual set would be um is is definitely different mm. than the energy of me and like what i would bring and how i would set it up because yeah like a lot of my world now i'm doing a lot more creative direction like leadership um productions and uh working with movement and sound and visuals and that's that's another way that i just love like making art mm. but i would um yeah, I've 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 got some stuff like in the works. Like, Bring phone it on. Me, I can on. Show you something right now. Really? But, yo, yeah, he's got yeah, some yeah. he's got some weapons in the chamber. Mm. That's amazing, because then that really does bring it back full cycle to that place. Wait, hold on. I just want to like we don't have to talk about it, but I'm just curious at your reaction to being on camera. Yeah. Just, like, where did, is my phone like, over there? Oh yeah, could yeah. you pass it? Quicker. We can edit it in. It's just yeah, like, yeah, I'm absolutely. just curious to see like your your reaction. All right, all this, right. This, this, this you'll have to, you'll have to put it into the uh, into the the, the the microphone as well. Well, I'm not even gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna actually describe it. I just okay. want. I'm just curious. I just want your your facial expression. And okay. this isn't even like the craziest thing. This is just what I was talking about yesterday. So. Da -da 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 -da. So. So that's a spatial audio rig, and that's a sequence of lasers that are around the audience. And uh, I'm able to send my voice in real time to All each different that. speaker. <gasps> so it's like higher dimensional, uh, like beatbox uh, voice and uh, electronic uh, setup. Wow. So this, this is on only a design, but we're doing this in September. Yo, and, and these where's are, that going to be? So Roundhouse this is gonna, or something. This, so this is going to be at Sur in Surrey, but uh, we're talking to a, a diff bunch of festivals in different spaces around the world. Incredible. And this is the kind of... Um, uh, there are other ways of performing these days. Like the mm. stage and the stereo setup is like... Uh, it's still my absolute love. But the ability to be like spatial, lighting, it's like... Um, uh, that's what excite, excites yeah. me is other setups. Wow. You'd be amazing like in a gallery like set up and just other ways of performing. Um, I mean, I got access to like this thing called an Ico speaker. Oh. It's a phantom audio speaker. So if it was in the room right now, it could like whisper in his ear no and no one way. else will hear it. <gasps> so it can send sound to specific points in space that you can only hear when, you're, when your voice Where is it's there. What, so it's finely tuned, thin line. Tr so, it, so it's like, it's additive. So it's, it looks like a Death Star. Like I love the thing. Um, <laughs> 
But that it, itself means go and watch it. You know. You, yeah. So so this um, it's got yeah it's got a vibe to it. You put it in a room and everyone's like, what is that? It's got yeah. this kind of energy. But like it could be like playing you um, as I'm talking now. It could be translating what I'm saying in German for some reason in your ear, oh. and I wouldn't be able to hear it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It can place. It can place phantom sounds in a space. Um, and th this is the thing, people don't know. There's all this new tech coming out. And just as an artist, I just love it. Mm. Like, I love the possibility. You've of, always loved tech. You've always been a tech head. I just love possibility. Yeah. Um, I love anything that can make me better. Like, anything that can train me or challenge me. Um, like, uh, I love hard. Like, I love mm. hard things. I love, like, hard challenges. Um, <laughs> but I, um, I just think that that is... Uh, that's just me. Just there. anything, literally, no barriers. Anything that can help me think about my art in a new way, I'm open to it. Yo. Like whether it's a, a a piece of tech or a dog. Like I, I don't care if it gives me inspiration. Then I like I just like receive it. Um, and they, it gives like even you can see how I'm talking about it. Mm. I'm just I'm just so gassed about possibilities. Mm. And there's so much new stuff coming out um, that people don't even know about. Um, so as an artist, I, I do just, I, I know there's anxieties and there should be anxieties mm. and AI is a really like complex thing, but man, there's some crazy art on the way. Like, yeah. Um, the future's bright, isn't it? It's, 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 uh, I hope so, but I am, um, for, for creatives, what we're going to lose in terms of automation, like there's AI is, is really a, it's going to challenge a lot, mm. a lot of people. Um, it's going to disrupt a lot of things, but. I really believe that it's going to open up a whole other set of possibilities. And I don't think that art is ever going away. No, I don't People are so. never going to stop needing human beings to paint and write poetry. No. Um, like I, I th and th there's other examples of that in the world which shows, has evidence for that. Um, other spaces where mm. AI's advanced more and people still, you need human beings. Still do man. it, man, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, but I, I'm really excited about all those possibilities. Um, because they challenge me. The future's bright, see? You don't know Roots tells you so. You know what I'm saying? From beatboxer to Harvard lecturer to, uh, you know, your uh, archetype street corner dearest uh, and uh, exhibition holder from art to beatboxing, Roots One. My brother, it's been great to have you on. Always an honour and pleasure. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, can't take the jungle out of the cat. Listen, you stay lucky, people. Till next time, Street Culture Podcast. Easy. <laughs>